Hello and welcome to Vovork. I'm Brian Watrous. This is the 18th in a 10 part video series in which we are exploring how to automate using vRealize Orchestrator. In the previous few videos, we've been taking a look at a number of different schema elements in Orchestrator, namely the basic decision and custom decision. Uh, both of those schema elements allow us to branch uh, different directions in our workflow based on test conditions that we define. In this particular video, we're going to look at a third schema element called a decision activity. Now, to follow along with this example here, I recommend that you take a look at the YouTube description down below where you'll find a URL that will take you to a place where you can download a package that you can install into your orchestrator server to follow along with the actual examples that I'm working with here in this video. Uh, if you haven't seen video number 14, it describes that package in more detail, so perhaps go take a look there. But I'm going to assume that you know how to go down below, get the URL, get the package installed, and are ready to go. So since you're ready to go, let's jump in here into our lab environment, where, as you can see, um, we can see the basic decision example workflow that we created before. And over here, we can see the custom decision that we uh, workflow that we defined in the previous video. What we're going to do now is go to this decision activity where well, the first thing that you'll notice is that there's two workflows this time. With basic decision and custom decision, there's just one workflow. But in the case of a decision activity, by the way, this is the decision. That's not the decision activity. Hang on a sec here. This is what a decision activity looks like. I almost fooled myself there because you'll notice that the decision activity icon and a custom decision icon look identical. Don't worry, I'll show you how to distinguish them. But when you use a decision activity like we're using here, instead of there just being one workflow involved, there are two workflows involved. Whereas with the basic decision and custom decision, you pick one or more variables to base the decision on. With the decision activity, the thing that controls the test that decides whether we go one branch or another is not based on examining some variable, some value of some variable, but rather with the decision activity, the decision of which path that we take depends upon the output of another workflow. When we drag a decision activity like this one into our workflow, Orchestrator is going to ask us for the name of another workflow. And then in the decision activity, we'll say, the decision test uh, results depends upon an output parameter of the other workflow. So in our example here, let's take a look at this other workflow. You'll notice that this workflow has no branching constructs at all. It doesn't have a decision activity, custom de decision, or, or, or basic decision. None of that in here. This is just a plain old linear workflow. Now in this workflow, um, let's take it from this direction first. How many inputs do you see? There are no inputs to this workflow. That's a little unusual, but it's entirely legal. How many outputs? Well, this workflow has one output. This workflow is going to tell us the number of virtual machines in our virtual infrastructure. So how does it know how many? If we're not feeding in the VMs, how does it know how to spit out how many, how many uh, um, VMs there are? Well, the answer to that is in the schema tab, which I'll show you in a moment. But real quickly here, let's look at the general tab. Are there any attributes? Why, yes, there is. In this case, there's a single attribute that's an array of virtual machines. And it's the value is not being set right now. That must mean that in the workflow, we're going to set the value of this VMs variable. But key thing here is VMs, the, the variable called VMs is an array of virtual machines. So let's go look at the schema. The way this workflow finds out how many virtual machines there are in our environment is because we call this action called get all VMs. Now, if we look more closely at get all VMs, let's actually edit the workflow. If we look at get all VMs, that action also takes no input parameters, but it does return a, a, an array of virtual machines which we can see here. So how does this work? Well, the way it works in the case of an action is it, it's just calling an action that's in some module. So here's the name of the action. Uh, if we go over a little to the right, you can see, actually, 
There we go. If we go over to the, to the right, you can see there's no arguments to that action. It just calls get all VMs. That's an action that's defined in the vCenter uh, plugin. Uh, the vCenter plugin includes a module called com.vmware.library.vc.vm, which includes, amongst other things, an action called get all VMs. You don't have to feed anything in as an input to that action. You just call the action and it returns an array of virtual machines. So our output, our array of virtual machines, is going to be determined automatically by this action. So when this action runs, the variable, well, which variable? Let's find out. Let's look at the binding. So the action returns uh, the number of Excuse me, the action returns the array of VMs through this variable called action result, but we're storing it, that value in the variable I showed you before. Our workflow has a, an attribute variable called VMs. So when we call get all VMs, the, all, an array of all the VMs in our entire virtual infrastructure are going to be returned as an array in the variable called VMs. So here, Report how many VMs is just a scriptable task. Let's open it up and see what's going on. It takes as input the array of VMs that we just built, and it returns as an output the number of, let's see down here, the, the number of VMs. So we store the number of VMs that's determined by that scriptable task as a variable in our workflow called numVMs. And since we're returning that as an output parameter, the output of this workflow is the number of virtual machines. So just as a quick reminder here, this workflow has one output parameter, returns the number of VMs in your infrastructure. So that's straightforward enough. So what's going on here in this workflow? This workflow is the one that has the decision activity. And like the other, other decision constructs, the other decision schema elements, it's got a green path and a red path, and you basically know how that works. But what's different in here is in a decision activity, we're not going to say we want to do some tests based on the value of some variable or variables. Instead, we're going to say we want to call a specific workflow, and we'll look at a specific output parameter of that workflow to determine whether we go this green path or this red path. Now, one of the things I mentioned earlier is the uh, indistinguishable uh, icons for a custom decision versus a decision activity. If you just look at the icons, you can't tell one from the, the, the other. They look identical. Please join me in submitting a feature request to get them to change that. I would love to have two different looking icons, but until um, they do that, it's easy enough if you just take a, one additional step, it's easy enough to tell whether this is a custom decision or a decision activity. You just need to go look inside the uh, decision element. If you go to the info tab, if there's an entry in here that says target element is blah, 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 workflow name, then you know that this has to be a decision activity. If there is on the info tab no target element, um, listed, then that means you're working with a, a custom decision. Uh, I know the label here is target element, but I, I like to think of this as the target workflow for when you're using a decision activity. So as you can see, this, this not a custom decision, this decision activity has been set up to call a workflow called how many VMs. That's the workflow I just showed you. It returns one output parameter, which contains the number of VMs in our infrastructure. So that's the workflow that we want to call. On the end tab, what we will end up doing is bringing in any additional variables that we might need from the current workflow. That, that workflow that we're calling, it's got its own in, input parameters, output parameters, attributes. The other workflows variables are not what we're talking about in the end tab. The end tab is still talking about this workflows. So this workflows variables. Do we want to bring any of this workflow's variables in for the tests that we're about to perform? Maybe we do, maybe we don't. In this particular case, we didn't bring any variables, but if we wanted to, you just click this button and up would pop a window that would allow you to see, um, actually, let me go into edit mode. There we go. So on the end tab, you just click this button to say which 
which um, variables from your workflow, this workflow, not the other workflow, but this workflow, what variables you want brought in, why would you bring them in? Because you might want to do something to test them in some sort of decision. Just like, just like a basic decision and a custom decision, we have to define what the test is here. So in this particular case, what we're going to do when we define a decision activity is we're going to pick an output parameter of the other workflow that we're calling, which you'll recall in our example is a variable called numVMs. When we pick that other variable, Orchestrator is going to automatically know what type of variable that is. And based on the type of variable, it's going to give you a drop down list to allow you to pick appropriate types of comparisons. So, for instance, we could say, is number of VMs greater than two? Or if this had been a Boolean, we could say, if um, how happy is false? Or, or, or so forth. So, just like the, the other decision elements that we've seen before, this drop down list is is um, sensitive to the type of variable that you choose. But in this case here, number numVMs greater than 2.0 means that if numVMs is greater than 2.0, then we will take the green path. Again, it doesn't say here, then we'll take the green path, but that's what you're defining in the decision tab. If this condition is true, then we will go the green path. So that's what it looks like to uh, wh when you have a decision activity set up. If you want to, um, feel free to go to the next video. I think we're on video number 19, if I recall correctly, will be the next one. And that's going to talk about a really interesting schema element called a switch schema element. So feel free to jump ahead if you don't want to watch the, the rest of this video. But if you do stick around for the rest of this video, what we're going to be looking at is a live demonstration of how we go about creating this sort of workflow. So let me just uh, save and close this here. Actually, first, before I do, so that I can create a workflow with the same name, I'm going to call this older one original. If only I could type. Are there many VMs? Okay, so we're saving our original workflow and we're going to create a new one. I'm not going to bother recreating the workflow that we're calling um, because you saw what it looked like and you know how to create a simple workflow of that sort. What we're going to do is we're going to create a new workflow called Are There Many VMs? And in this workflow, we're going to drag in a decision activity. And when we do so, First thing it wants to know is what workflow do we want this workflow to call when to, to base the decision on. And now I have to see if I can remember the name of the workflow. Thankfully, I only have to type a portion of the name. Here's the workflow. Let me just double check. Is that the right one? Yep, that's the right one. So we're going to bring in, actually, we're not bringing in this workflow. We're saying that the decision needs to call this workflow. So I'll double click it. And we've got our two paths. And in our two paths, we can drag out our scriptable tasks. In all these examples, I keep dragging out scriptable tasks, but you can drag in essentially any of these types of schema elements. And you know essentially what the code is going to look like, and you know how to change the labels for these two scriptable tasks. So I'm not going to do that. Instead, I just want to focus the rest of this video on how do I set up this decision element, this decision activity element. Well, we've already done part of it. We specified which workflow we want to call. Now what we need to do is edit the workflow. In case you forgot, go to the Info tab. Here's the name of the workflow that we're calling. What we need to do is bring in any variables from our workflow that we need to examine, which in this case we don't. And then we'll go to the Decision tab. In the Decision tab, currently there's no output parameters of that workflow we're calling mentioned. But if we click on this link, we'll get a list of all of the output parameters of the workflow that this decision activity is calling. Well, that workflow only has one output parameter, so we select it, click Select, and now, since it knows that it's a number, we get various numerical uh, comparison operators here. Well, the one we want in this particular case is greater, and then I'm just arbitrarily picking this number. Uh, two is probably not very many virtual machines for you, but my lab environment's very, very small, so if it's cut greater than two, wow, my lab environment's really big. Anyways, if I hit close, 
I'm basically done. Yeah, I need to change these labels. Yeah, I need to add some code, but I've, I've done it. You just drag a decision activity into your schema, tell Orchestrator which workflow that decision activity should call. Then you edit the decision activity, go to, maybe go to its end tab, but crucially you have to go to the decision tab to pick which workflow output parameter of the other workflow you want to base the decision on. And then you just fine tune the decision. And if you've done all that, you now have a workflow that's using a decision activity. So that's the third of our three uh, decision schema elements. They, they all have that diamond shaped icon. They have some similarities and some differences, but they're all very useful. That's it for this video, but you'll definitely want to take a look at the next video because in the next video, we're going to look at another schema element called a switch schema element. It's modeled after the switch um, construct that you see in programming languages like JavaScript. So if you've never seen one before, or even if you have seen the, the JavaScript equivalent, you're going to want to take a look at the next video because we're going to be talking about the switch statement. If you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and do so, but I'll see you over in the next video. See you guys.